corporations have gone global. And by going global, the uh, governments have lost some control over corporations, regardless of whether the corporation can be trusted or cannot be trusted. Governments today do not have over the corporations the power that they had and the leverage that they had 50 or 60 years ago. And that's a major change. So governments have become powerless compared to where they were before. I was invited to Washington, D.C. to attend this meeting that was being put together by the National Security Agency called the Critical Thinking Consortium. I remember standing there in this room and looking over on one side of the room, and we had CIA, NSA, DIA, FBI, Customs, Secret Service. Uh, and then on the other side of the room, we had Coca-Cola, Mobile Oil, GTE, and Kodak. And I remember thinking, I am like in the epicenter of the intelligence industry right now. I mean, the line is not just blurring, it's just not there anymore. And to me, it, it spoke volumes as to how industry and government were consulting with each other and working with each other. As 34 nations of the Western Hemisphere gathered to draft a far-reaching trade agreement, one that would lay the groundwork to privatize every resource and service imaginable, thousands of people from hundreds of grassroots organizations joined to oppose it. Canada's top business lobbyists and its chief trade representative discount the dissent in the streets. For them, the America's 800 million citizens speak with one voice. Nice to see you. Well done on your strong advocacy of uh, trust, truth, justice, wisdom, and all those things. Okay. I was looking yesterday at the statements at the inauguration, the opening ceremony. What, what an extraordinary progress Absolutely. over the last 15 years Absolutely. when you heard such a, com a common language. A common language. <laughs> Yes, and from the most developed to the least, it was, uh, it was extraordinary that now that we see the benefits of trade, more and more people want to buy it, because we do realize that it helps everyone, from the poorer to the better off. So A lot of these countries are not saying we want to get off, they want to get on. Exactly. Well, no one wants out. What it is, Everyone Mr. wants yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well done. So, Thank you. Uh, you. Uh, you. Super. So, so far, so good. 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 I'm inside and this is all outside, so that's, uh, that's the way it is. But, uh... So what do you think when you look at all this? Well, it's, uh, I mean, I think it's, I think it's too bad that, that this has, uh, that this has erupted. Let's see. Does there need to be some measure of accountability? Yes. And I think the business community recognizes that. But that accountability is in the marketplace. It's with their shareholders. It's with the public perception and the public image that they are projecting. That's, if, if, if companies don't do what they should be doing, they're going to be punished in the marketplace. And that's not what any company wants. Six hundred thousand people were killed to get rights for people. 
and then with strokes of the pen over the next 30 years, judges applied those rights to capital and property while stripping them from people. I gotta be honest with you, when the September 11 situation happened, I didn't know that, the, <laughs> and I must say, and I wanna, and I wanna, wanna say this because it's, I wanna take it lightly, it's not a light situation, it's a, a devastating act, uh, it was really a bad thing, it was one of the worst things I've seen in my lifetime, you know, but I will tell you, and every trader will tell you, who was not in that building, and who was buying gold and who owned gold and silver, that when it happened, the first thing you thought about was, well, how much is gold up? The first thing that came to mind was, my God, gold must be exploding. Fortunately for us, all our clients were in gold. So when it went up, they all doubled their money. Everybody doubled their money. It was a blessing in disguise. Devastating. Crushing, heart shattering, but on a financial sense, for the, my clients that were in the market, they all made money. Now, I wasn't looking for this type of help. But it happened. When the U.S. bombed Iraq uh, back in 1991, the price of oil went from $13 to $40 a barrel, for Christ's sake. Now, we couldn't wait for the bombs to start raining down on Saddam Hussein. We were all excited. We wanted Saddam to really create problems. Do whatever you have to do. Set fire to some more oil wells, because the price is going to go higher. Every broker was chanting that. There was not a broker that I know of that wasn't excited about that. This was a disaster. This was something... That was, you know, catastrophe happening, bombing, wars. In devastation, there is opportunity. When I joined the military, I raised my hand and said that I would protect the Constitution of the United States and its people, and against foreign and domestic enemies. But guess what? I did not raise my hand to protect private companies like KBR and put my life on the line so they can make a buck. When are we going to realize that people fighting in Iraq against us, they're not terrorists, they're soldiers. What would we do if somebody invaded us? I know I will pick up my weapon and fight against them. What the hell we call them? Terrorists? These people want their country back. The real enemies are not in some distant land. They're not people whose names we don't know and cultures we don't understand. The enemy is people we know very well and people we can identify. The enemy is a system that wages war when it's profitable. The enemy is the CEOs who lay us off from our jobs when it's profitable. It's the insurance companies who deny us health care when it's profitable. It's the banks who take away our homes when it's profitable. Our enemy is not 5,000 miles away. They are right here at home. And if we organize and fight with our sisters and brothers, we can stop this war, we can stop this government, and we can create a better world. <laughs> and welcome to Module 1 of the Illumicorp video training course. I would like to officially welcome you as a member of the team. You've joined our organization at perhaps the most exciting point in our long history. Our founders shared a passionate dream to transform this country and eventually the whole world into one cohesive organization. When Illumicorp finishes gaining centralized control over the resources of the planet, Will. We can then organize, distribute, and govern for the benefit of all. After competition and dissent are eliminated, we will build a utopia for the people of the world to share based on need and rejoice together in a harmonious new